Backing up your photos. Is it important? Only if your pictures matter. In this episode, we talk to Backblaze, the cloud backup service that keeps your most precious data safe and sound so easily, you'll forget it's there. Until you need it, that is. Welcome to another episode of the Photo Apps Podcast. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and today my guest is Jim Goldstein, the Director of Marketing for Backblaze. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So Backblaze, of course, is the preeminent cloud backup solution. And this is not a typical type of an app or service that we would have on this show because it's not directly photography related. But of course, every photographer needs backup, arguably more than many other users do because photos are kind of important. And if you lose them, that ain't good. Backing up is a, is a critical thing. I think I think Jim would agree with me, yes? I would think so, yeah. There's uh, no population of people a little bit more sensitive about backup than photographers or videographers. There you go. And uh, unfortunately, we tend to create a lot of content, which makes backup a challenge. And that's something we're going to talk about throughout the show, some of the challenges that we as content creators in general, photographers or videographers, will create and just the amounts of it and the, the challenges of backing that up. But before we get into all of that, uh, first, again, welcome to the show. I do appreciate you coming on here. I know we've been trying to schedule this for a while, so this is exciting. And I've been a user of Backblaze, oh boy, uh, a decade? How long have you guys been in business? About that, yeah. We just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. Okay. I know Not that I was on in the very early days. So uh, so been along for the whole ride, and it's been a really good experience the entire time. So I'm glad to have you on here to talk about it and kind of spread spread the love of Backblaze around a little bit more. Yeah, 10 year anniversary was last year, I think. So we're actually 11 now. 11. Excellent. So we're going on 11. Where are you guys based? We're based out of San Mateo, California, which is just about smack dab between uh, San Francisco and San Jose. Okay. And the, the size of your company, I mean, you've been, haven't been around for a while. You're more than just a couple of uh, people in a garage. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a medium sized team, medium, small sized team. Um, lots of People who are very focused on providing a, a great service um, for a, a great cost, yeah. a great price. Great price. And it is a great price. And we'll, we'll come to the pricing later because there's a couple different ways to, to structure that. Um, just kind of a general, people haven't heard of this before. If someone has never heard of Backblaze and never even heard of cloud backup, how do you summarize what cloud backup is? Yeah, that's a, a good a good question. Um, a lot of people... Um, kind of snarkily say that the cloud is nothing more than somebody else's computer. Right. <laughs> that's um, a t-shirt. That, the cloud doesn't exist. It's just somebody else's computer. <laughs> that's right. And technically it's, it's not that far from the truth. Sure. Um, the difference here is that the cloud for us is um, a data center um, with not just one computer with a, a, a very elaborate system. Um, and that elaborate system allows us to um, store data across multiple, multiple drives um, so that there's, um, a great deal of redundancy. Um, and so technically, while, yes, your data is being stored on another machine, that machine is incredibly complex and um, is architected in such a way that um, there is lots of failover capability, lots of redundancy, um, minimal to no downtime. And um, that's what enables the cloud to actually function as um, a 24-7 you know, storage sure. device. Sure. Now you, you talk about redundancy. If I upload a file, just, you know, one single file, upload a photo up onto Backblaze, it's not just stored on a single hard drive. It's, it's, it, is the file split apart across multiple drives? Is it the same copy of it stored on multiple drives? Obviously this is a lot of behind the scenes, but. Uh, yeah, the, the files are stored uh, across multiple drives in such a way that um, this is the one thing that I, I, didn't uh, have like a, a visual for, mm. um, but you know, the way it works is that we have tens of thousands of drives um, in our data center and we have um, different nodes for, um, you know, different areas of the, the structure mm -hmm. of the data across our servers. And these nodes store our data across multiple drives so that if one of these drives fails, um, it's, it's like a very elaborate raid system, sure. um, in which case, uh, data being lost because we, the way we look at it and the way, the reason why we encourage people to use Backblaze is that, uh, we understand that drives fail of course. and that's going to be as true for 
you or or for us. And so we've architected our system in such a way that if and when drives fail, it could even be multiple drives, um, the data is stored across so many drives um, that it would take just an inordinate uh, catastrophe. Sure. Like I think we would all not be using computers <laughs> if it got to that point. Um, so yeah, there's just so much redundancy and the architecture set up in such a way that uh, as drives fail, um, we have a whole team that's just going through and replacing drives pretty much daily sure. as as they fail um, and just keep the system up and running so that data is never never out of, out of your click. You never not access it. Right. And with drive failing, you're talking about a, an if and when unfailing. And it really is with drives. It's not a case of if. It is a case of when. Dry, all drives fail. You yep. run them long enough, they will fail. And some of them will fail after a week and some of them will run for 10 years before they fail. But they will eventually fail. And I think that's a really important point for anybody who's watching – who might just have one computer with one hard drive who thinks, well, I've never had a crash. I'm doing fine. Well, that's great yep. that you haven't, but the time will come. The day will come when you'll have a crash. But even that, back, uh, backing up in general to Backblaze or any other service is not just about drive failure. It's also about accidental deletion. Oh, crap. I deleted that file. I deleted that photo accidentally. Where is it? What happened to it? If it's backed up, you can go back in time and get it. That's right. Um you know, we we recognize that, uh, you know, your data is vulnerable in two ways. One is that you can have uh, corruption of the files that happen. And then also the fact that um, sometimes that's software, sometimes that's hardware. And then also there are just hard drive, hardware failures. You know, um, one of my favorite stories that really primed me for being super paranoid about <laughs> uh, data backup is I used to consult at college in our computer labs when all this stuff was was pretty new and people were, you know, this is the, the day of just people accessing their files on floppy disks mm -hmm. and people would lose their, their data all the time. And the software wasn't auto saving at that point. So it became ingrained in me that you always have to be backing up or have multiple copies. And I had one instance where my computer was getting slower and slower and slower as I was working on, you know, my final thesis. <laughs> and, um, I kept backing up, you know, to like a floppy disk off my hard drive at the time. And eventually, just as I hit save and printed it, um, I actually had the arm of the drive fall off. <laughs> and I mean, it, was, it wasn't just like a minor failure. It was literally the drive, the arm fell Physically off. Physically fell platter. apart. Oh my God. And so at that point, I was like, well, I've, I've got it backed up. Right. And I could shake the enclosure and you would hear this arm rattling around. Yikes. Um, that was a long time ago. Drives are a lot hardier now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for the most part, um, you know, we expect, you expect something failure. to happen. Yeah. Oh, you, you mentioned hardware failure and software failure. Um, and I said, there's the human error and, you know, call that wetware failure. You know, we, we make really dumb mistakes as humans. Right. We delete files we didn't intend to. And I know there's one shoot that I did. This is a long time ago, but I somehow, I thought I had it backed up. I thought I'd copied it somewhere else and I deleted a copy of it, which I thought was a copy, but it turned out to be originals. And unfortunately I didn't realize it until six months or a year later and those pictures are just nowhere to be seen and they'll never be recovered again. And that's, there's a long time ago and that's definitely pre black, pre back place. And, uh, it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing to lose those files and to know that it was your own fault for doing it. Cause you did something stupid. Yep. Yeah. That's a shame. So I want to talk a little bit more technical before we get into the demo of the show. You talked about this massive array of drives and systems that keep everything redundant and multiple failure points, et cetera, et cetera. And that it would take a pretty epic catastrophe to lose everything. That's right. What – you're in California. Everybody's mm -hmm. – there's the big one, right? Everybody fears that. If yep. your entire plant goes down, is there a, a backup, a physical duplicate, a mirror of the entire Backblaze system somewhere else in the world? So let, let me um, go back to how things are set up. Okay. It, it gets really complicated <laughs> with how we have um, our storage pods and the tomes and the drive set up. But what I'll do is I'll provide you a link that goes into detail about how how file is stored across 20 pods and each each pod has one tome and has each tome has 20 drives. I mean, so there is a very complex system in place and I didn't want to gloss that over. Sure. So I'll make that available to you and your, um, your listeners. Great. So we'll put a link readers. to that in the show notes. That would be awesome. And then as far as the big one, our data center is in Sacramento and what we have set up is, you know, in analyzing, uh, our data center location, there is an extensive, um, 
search and a variety of parameters and a variety of reports. Um, and this is true for most cloud uh, services. We take this very seriously. And where uh, our data center is located, it is in the least risk averse location possible um, for California. You know, that includes flood, earthquake, you name it, okay. right? Um, we also have um, another data center that we just opened in Phoenix. Um, so there's an there's an increased growth uh, from the company to try to address that concern. Okay. Um, and that's the direction that we're moving. Okay. That's great. That's great to know. So I've, obviously your building is super seismically protected and all that stuff. So is there, I know it's just out of morbid curiosity, but is there a number, a earthquake that the building can survive an earthquake of 9.8 type of a thing that, <laughs> you, you know, if we, if we stay under that level, then we know we're good. If that was the case, I'd live in the data center. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know uh, what that what that would be, I, um, but yeah, you know, I wouldn't be able to really say. No, no worries. It's just you know curiosity. It's uh, it's one of the things I used to live in California. So, and I've experienced plenty of earthquakes, and it's definitely one of those things. You go, well, you know, one day, one day, it's probably going to happen. It's not why I moved, but it's uh, it's on your mind. It really is when you live yeah, in California. Yeah, I, I I've lived here for most of my life, and I've I've not been too worried about it, and. There are earthquakes all the time, everywhere, just about. Yeah. Oh, yeah and most of them are, are too small to feel. And the right. ones that you might be talking about are, happen like once, once a century. Yeah. There's, there's been, uh, I've experienced some pretty, pretty good ones. Uh, I've been uh, lucky or unlucky <laughs> as the case may be. I've been rattled out of my chair a couple of times. Um, all right. So enough of the the geeky stuff here. Let's get into the software itself. We want to take a look at. You've got a demo set up to show us how it works. Last thing before we go into that is pricing. And I know this is kind of going to integrate a little bit into the conversation, but top level pricing, what are we talking about? Um, it's $5 a month. Uh, currently, you can subscribe on a yearly basis as well and save a little money. Um, so that is um, the, the general pricing. We also have an, another service, which I'll talk about as well, called B2 Cloud Storage. Right. And that's an object storage solution. And that would be uh, recommended for people who have tons and tons and tons of data as well as more robust uh, data needs. We, we talked about this a little bit off offline before the show, before we hit record, and we'll, we will get back into it because I'm I'm one of those people that has too much data. What did I say? 25 okay. terabytes or something backed up with the $5 a month yeah, plan. Yeah. Um, it's a little, little bit ridiculous. Jim shared with me that I'm one of those people that they talk about behind closed doors. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that $5 a month, that is just for our audience, that is per computer, per hard drive, per terabyte. What is that $5 per, a month? Per computer. Per computer. Per computer. And that's unlimited backup. Um, works really, really well and easy to configure as well as we'll discuss. Yep, absolutely. It's a bargain. And it's, I think the $5, and the reason I, I made that point was for our audience to really understand that five bucks a month, that's a computer. And that's as many hard drives as you have plugged into it as one of mine is that has 25 terabytes worth of data on it and backing up to, to Backblaze. It's, uh, you don't get charged per drive and another systems that charge per terabyte or per drive or whatever it might be, but external drives keep plugging them in and, and the data will continue to back up. Uh, I have five or six computers that are on there now. I've got multiple to my own, my wife's computer, my assistant's computer, yeah. you know, we've got multiple systems on there. So it's, uh, so we, we've been rounding out the service. So, um, B2 cloud storage, for example, is great for people who have NAS devices or servers that they want to back up. And then, uh, the B2 backup service, the personal backup, is great for individual computers. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a service now where you can um, administer groups of computer backups. Mm. And that's under our uh, business backup. Okay. So there's ways to actually have one account and manage multiple computers. Um, and there's also a way for you to manage servers and NAS backups okay. in addition to personal backup. So it's a mouthful, but sure. trust me, we're, we're covering all the bases here. No, that's great. And maybe that's something <laughs> we can talk about uh, afterwards offline, just my specific setup and maybe find the ideal because it sounds like maybe I don't have the ideal setup running for me. So, um, so we'll do okay. that. All right, but let's get into it. Let's take a look at the system. You all set on your demo side? I am. Let's take a look at the at the demo Mac. What are we got looking at? What are we looking at here? All right, great. Um, Let's see if I can do this. I have a little little app here that highlights just the the screen that I want. Um, so this is backblaze.com, and um, we have we pride ourselves on having stored um, millions of gigabytes and having 
and billions of files and helping people restore those files. So uh, the counter here is actually accurate where we've helped people restore over uh, 23 uh, billion uh, files wow. <laughs> and, and counting. It's a it's a miraculous thing, and it just shows Jeez. you that you know this is a system that really does work. Um, if we click on uh, the personal backup tab, um, it's really easy to get started. You just have to click on try it free, provide an email address. Um, so that's a great trick, by the way, for those watching the screen. If you type your, if you're able to use a Gmail address and you type your email address plus something else, then that is basically a new free email address that you get. So you, you can it. filter based off of it. It's a it's a great, very good thing. <laughs> and it's an easy way to see if people are uh, leaking your information. Exactly. Yeah. If you do, you know, Joseph. <laughs> which we do not. Which you do not. That's right. So if you do Joseph plus backblaze at Gmail, as, uh, as Jim just did here, and suddenly you start getting email from, you know, Bob's computer company that's addressed to your email plus backblaze, and you know that backblaze sold you out. But obviously, they're not going to do that. So let's see here. I clicked on. You hit the installer. Yeah, let me go back to the Finder. Got my downloads. So downloads a very quick installer. And, and audience, we're just we're basically going through the the install process just to see how straightforward it is. So you create an account, uh, hit the install button or hit the download button, whatever it was, and it is it downloaded this tiny little installer, and there you've got it, the Backblaze installer, along with an uninstaller, which is very good. So you can you know you can get very that out handy. of your system easily. And you're copying that to your applications folder. Why are you doing that? Yeah. No, oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm so used to doing that from other things. We don't. We don't do that. We just. We just click on it. There we go. Um, thinking, why are you copying that over? That's very curious. Yeah. Sorry. No worries. So that just, <laughs> uh, one of those days. Install now, and then I give it permissions on my computer. And try and get the screen off before you typed in your password, but it didn't matter because it's all bulleted anyway. Yeah. All right. So it is uh, waiting to install. There we and go. There Analyzing the drive. Um, and then what it's going to do is it's just going to get a, a quick read on um, what you might have on your machine. Um, not every file, but perhaps uh, image types, sizes. Okay. And uh, the backup that will happen in the background um, will then use that data to most effectively back up your machine. Okay. Okay, great. So at this point, you create an account, hit install, download or something, run the installer, and that's essentially it, right? It's now scanning your hard drive. It's going to pop up a yep. dialog at some point here that says it's done scanning, and it just starts backing up. And That's right. That's it's it's really... Um, I want, I want to say, uh, I was going to say brain free, like thinking free, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's really meant to make the, the process very, very simple. Um, Backblaze uh, by default will back up your entire computer, um, your entire drive. And the benefit with this, especially if you're thinking in regards to uh, like a startup drive, is that you will be able to restore your system as, and your applications, not just individual files. Um, and as I'll show you later, you can actually specify, you know, different things that you want or don't want backed up. Um, but by and large, the default is that it's going to back up everything. Now, we say back up everything, but does that include the operating system as well? Um, yeah, uh, it'll back up your entire drive. So what <clears throat> happens is if let's just say your startup drive in this a horrible scenario dies, right? And you need this back. You you want to restore everything so you're back up and running. Um, you can do one of two things. You can access Backblaze through a web browser and access individual files. For example, if a client is hollering at you that they want you know their wedding photos sure. or whatnot, um, and then you can pull those down. Um, the other option is that you can go into uh, our website at, once you log into your account. And you can request um, a thumb drive restore or a hard drive restore. And we have a, uh, a program actually where we will send you your, your backup. Let's just in this case say it's your startup drive. We'll send you a new drive and you can either keep the drive and, and pay for it. Or you can copy everything down uh, 
and install that on a new drive that you have and then return the drive and you're not charged for for the drive itself. Now, is that – you're saying send a new drive. I'm assuming this is going to be a Thunderbolt or USB 3 drive, not an internal drive that you would literally just yank the old drive out of your Mac and or PC and plop a new one in? Um, I believe it's an external drive, but I – would have to check the website myself to be 100%. <laughs> so you get that external drive, and if it is a complete system backup with my operating system and everything else, how do I go about doing that restore? I mean, if I, if I just request files, I get a bunch of files, find that's files. I can copy them over in the Finder, but I don't have a right. Finder right now, right? I've got Well, a- in this situation, you would have an external drive that you could plug in, set as your startup drive, and then boot up off of that. So the drive that you um, send is actually going to be a bootable drive? If... If you back up, if you specify a certain drive right, that you're, and you specify that as a startup drive oh, wow. and, it has a, op, and it has an operating mm-hmm. system on it, conceivably, yes. Um, wow, I didn't know not, that. not saying that that's a guarantee. It really depends on on your setup and what your configurations are for your backup. Now, ideally, in this type of situation, what a user should do is buy a new hard drive um, to replace their internal that failed, install a clean operating system, and then install their apps from the cloud or from the app store, download from adobe.com or whatever they're coming from, yep. and then just copy your files over. That's a cleaner, better way to do it. But if you don't want to take the time to do that, if you just need to get back on, up and running more quickly, it sounds like you can do a restore directly from the drive. That's pretty good. D- depends on the urgency. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it's always better. Because when you better. use data, usually everything becomes ur- very urgent. It does. No, absolutely. <laughs> but also at the same token, it could be... It, it's going to take you on what, how, how, what is the turnaround for your drive? Let's say that my drive crashes right now and I go, oh crap, I go into Backblaze right now and I say, send me a complete copy of my hard drive. Is that going to go in FedEx today to get tomorrow or how, how long does that take? It will vary. We have a queue of backups. The service is increasingly becoming more and more popular. Um, also depends on how much data you have backed up that you want restored okay. um, and sent to you. So I can't really say with in any definitive terms how long it would take. Um, but we try to get it to you as obviously as fast as we possibly can. And then once the restore is completed on a drive, uh, we send it to you via FedEx. Okay. And is that overnighted? Or do you, I think you, you can specify. You can specify. So probably pay a little off charge so. to get overnighted. So, um, okay. So that's fantastic, but obviously does take time. So for listeners, the, the fastest way to do this is going to be to download the files that you need, which you of course have complete access to. You don't have to request That's a drive. Right. This is an option. And That's right. you could download everything. If you had 10 terabytes backed up, you could choose to download all 10 terabytes if you wanted to, right? Right. It's just a matter of how long that's going to take. Every user Every customer is different in terms of how fast their connections are and how many files they have stored. Right. So it will vary, right? Yeah. Um, usually people recognize that they have a, a drive failure or a file is corrupted and they're trying to access a very specific file. So in that case, um, we can help you get those files back or file or files back pretty instantly through uh, the web interface. Sure. And then, you know, for the things that are not as critical and in need immediately, then the drive restore, the thumb drive restore usually is uh, very convenient right. because at that point you're not as super stressed as you might, um, but you know you know that it's on its way. Right, exactly. And using your, your wedding photographer scenario, the bride and groom's calling, where's my pictures, I need them now, and your hard drive just crashed, knowing that you can log into the system download those individual files even if it's if, even if you're using a different computer you know if you're in such a bad situation you literally run to the computer store buy a new computer come home and fire it up and install photoshop or whatever you're using you can log into backblaze download those couple hundred files that you need and get back to work right away that's right and i i will say the the big caveat here is that that's if you have like i, I can I can talk to you about Backblaze. I can lead you to download and install the software. But if you disable it or, you know, <laughs> you don't have your drives uh, plugged in for backup, right. then, you know, that becomes a point of failure. So you have to be very disciplined and um, not just downloading the application, but making sure that you're using the service and but have that's it also, configured correctly. I mean, it's. I think it's you're being generous saying that you have to be disciplined because it's it is a set it and forget it. And unless you specifically go in and say disable this. It will right. continue to back up. And I know from past experience that you can go in and you can you can pause a backup or you can say um, stop the backup until I say start again. And that's right. You, you can set a schedule. Right. You can set like an, an amount per day. 
um, you know, we understand that people might have certain restrictions with their internet provider sure. and caps. So, you know, we're, we're trying to become more and more accommodating to these different scenarios. Right. Right. But if you don't, if you turn everything off after a certain number of days, I don't recall what it is now, maybe five days or something, it'll pop up a dialogue that says, hey, you haven't backed up in a week or five days or whatever it is. Dude, back up, uh, which is that's great. That's right. And also, also, if you have an external drive that you had backed up that's no longer attached, um, you know, you want to make sure that that's attached every so often so that the application has a chance to see if there's been any changes and and sync things. And there's a schedule, right? If I if I have an external hard drive, let's say I've got one computer, one external hard drive, I plug in that external hard drive, everything is now backed up. I disconnect that drive. How long before, how long will that data from that external drive without having been reconnected stay on Backblaze before Backblaze says, all right, this data is no longer valid, time to delete it? That's right, 30 days. 30 days. Um, and we recognize that that is a pain point for some people. I know individually before I started working at Backblaze, that was... Uh, an, an issue or a concern, particularly as a photographer, videographer, um, the company has grown its its offerings, and that's one of the reasons why uh, Backblaze B2 cloud storage is something to consider. Uh, because in that situation, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. So, um, I I use Backblaze B2, uh, or excuse me, Backblaze personal uh, backup, which we've been talking about to, up until this point mm-hmm. uh, for my machines for my my working machine in terms of, of that drive, I use, um, I, I have a very convoluted, uh, setup for drives, but I have, uh, backed up all of my, my working drives to a NAS drive as well. And that NAS drive syncs, it's a Synology, uh, uh, NAS, mm-hmm. and that is set up to sync to B2, which doesn't have an issue with there's, there's no that's just however you want to use it you can store your data there for as long as you want um, no data is disappearing it's basically a, a huge infinite external hard drive that you just place your data on and you access or manipulate in any way that you see fit and the application for personal backup allows you to just behind the scenes you know without thinking make sure that your computer is is backed up so I differentiate the two between like your your working computer as well as your you know your archive okay. of video files and and photo files. So just in case people are wondering what's going on here. The the install. Oh look at that! <laughs> I couldn't Perfect have timed that better. Timing. It just completed. There we go. So that is now finished scanning the drive. Uh, well, let's go ahead and finish going through this, and then I want to talk about backup times, realistic expectations for how long it'll take to backup data. But go ahead and, sure. uh, and, and run through so the rest finish of this. And close. I'm done. I didn't need to copy that over. I just need to <laughs> click on it. Um, now you'll see that I have a uh, little Backblaze logo up at the top. And it will tell me exactly how many files I have to back up. And oops, a little click happy. <laughs> um, the number of files are remaining to back up. Um, for the sake of our connection, I'm going to pause the backup. Okay. And that's an important thing to point out. If you ever, if you're running a backup and you need to pause it because you need to upload another big file or you're doing a big video chat. I mean, for me personally, I do my daily YouTube show every morning. Part of a routine before we start the show is to pause the Backblaze backup because I've got it set. And I know you're going to show this. I have it set to use maximum bandwidth because I have a ton of data that's uh, backing up. And I want to make sure that I have a clean pipe to the internet for my live broadcast show. That's right. So it's great. And to I, I think, that. you know, uh, I, I don't think that we're, an exception. I mean, all services that are referencing some form of cloud storage have the um, the potential to kind of um, take up some of that bandwidth in your well, of course your internet connection. Logical. And the more you have active, you know, the potentially that can impact uh, transfer rates, right. um, not just for one, but all all of them. So even for this demo, I have like everything everything turned off. Yeah, um, <laughs> just. Just for the best. Yeah, you know, when anybody knows who's done a lot of Skyping, you get anything else going on in the in the system, a, a backup starts, someone decides to upload a video to YouTube, and it's just, it can crunch your your bandwidth for sure. Yeah. So, And it's it's unpredictable. You just don't know how the software of different things are written. Right, so that um, pause is key. Yeah. So um, again, it, it's showing how much uh, data it, it will back up, which is about, looks like about three terabytes, because I have multiple drives uh, on my machine. Um, there's the option to pause, as we discussed. You can uh, jump to restoring files, checking for updates. We have um, a, a good degree of help available through our support site. Um, if you have a previous license with us and you have a new machine, 
you can actually inherit uh, a backup state so that it uses the existing license that you have. Now, what does that and, do to the files? So if I've got, I have a, a Mac, you know, I've got my MacBook Pro here or whatever, and it's been backing up. Now I'm going to go buy a new one. I'm going to buy a shiny new one with a touch bar. I'm not sure why I would, but let's say I did. And, uh, and that's going to be my new system. So I'm going to copy files over, whether I do that manually or I do a local time machine backup and restore, whatever it is. Point is, at the end of the right. day, I've got a new laptop that has the same data as my old laptop did. That old laptop's going to get repurposed, get sold, whatever it is. Right. So if I go and I inherit the backup state from my old laptop, does my new one have to start re-uploading all the same files all over again? Or does it yeah, look and the, say, the, oh, that file 123.psd is already there, already backed up? Yeah, as as I understand it, and hopefully I, I don't misspeak, is um, the inherent backup state allows you to pick up with an existing license. Um, in the instance that you've provided, that you have a new computer and you've duplicated your the drive from your old machine that was using Backblaze, um, yes, in, in concept, that's the goal, that inheriting the backup state will allow you to just pick up with where you left off um, after you copied all the data from the previous machine using Backblaze to the new machine. So it, but when you're cloning that drive, right? In your new machine. Cloning and it or just, just copying the files over. And, I, and right. I've have done this, of course, many times over the years. And I'm, I'm quite sure that it, there's unique file IDs and Backblaze knows it says, okay, that file already exists. And it'll do a sum check and it'll make sure that it really is truly mm -hmm. the same file. And then it goes, okay, this is already backed up. Move on to the next one. That's right. Oh, right. So if I go to uh, Backblaze preferences, let's see if it brings it up here. Nice. Um, what you'll see is, um, and I, I pause backup right. so you can go back and start backing up by clicking on this button. And that backup, by there, the way, folks, it automatically pause or that pause rather it pauses for, I believe it's 90 minutes, it might be two hours. So I think it's a 90 minute and it just pauses and then it automatically starts again. So if you hit right. pause, you don't have to worry about hitting start. Looks like, it looks like it paused it for two hours. Two hours. Okay. Oh, it says right there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and we'll tell you, and then you can, uh, Get a status update on the number of files. Um, you can see that it's going to back up uh, continuously, and it will tell you the remaining files. Um, this is a trial, so um, you have 15 days to try it. Um, you can actually, this is a, a bit of confusion for most people. It may take many people more than 15 days to back up more than what they have on their computer. But um, in the process, you don't have to be completely backed up in order to restore files. Right. So you can still try the service within 15 days, even if all your data is not in Backblaze yet. Um, so I invite people when they do a trial at Backblaze with Backblaze software that you run it maybe after a day or two, go in, see how easy um, restoring a file is, downloading it from the web, um, and just seeing like how that that flow goes back and forth. We've done surveys um, every year for the pretty much the lifetime of the company. And surprisingly, a, a large portion of people, even though they use Backblaze, haven't used the restore functionality. Mm. Um, so um, it's not that it's a bad experience, just most people just you know start it and forget it, and only when there's an emergency right. do they pick back up with it. Um, but it, I really invite people to really try it out and see how easy it is, because sure. it's, it, it's pretty streamlined. I know that I've personally used it just for those random, I know that file is on the desktop. I, I put it there. Where the heck is it? I can't find it. And I, you know what? Just go into Backblaze, go back in time a little bit. Right. Oh, there it is. Pull it down. I've done that and, several and that's times. A, that's a really key thing. So uh, it's not just that you're backing up. You actually, it's like a time machine type thing where you can go back in time. Right. So if a file gets deleted, you, you have 30 days to go back in time to find that file. Um, and that's pretty invaluable. Oh, that's yeah. something that I think yeah, huge, is a really huge benefit. When you're doing your either initial backup or 10 years down the road as I am, you're backing new stuff up. Is there any way to prioritize to say, okay, these files are the most important. Back those up before you go back and up all this other crap. Back this up because that I that's what's important to me. Um, I don't know of a way off the top of my head. I know that there's a lot of prioritization that goes in behind the scenes in terms of image sizes. And um, there may be some file types that are prioritized, but I think it mostly goes by size of the file type um, because our goal is to try to get as many files of yours backed up as quickly as possible. Mm. Um, and uh, it's going to be a lot easier for us to grab a bunch of smaller files okay. than it is going to be like if you have like um, a 500 gigabyte Photoshop file right. or, or video file. 
Um, and uh, there probably are going to be ways that you can um, we, we, we'll go through here. We'll, we'll learn this as we go. So there are settings here to specify, uh, you know, the backup settings for different drives or to uncheck drives. Mm-hmm. So in, in my case, I'm, I have a lot of redundancy here, so I'm going to undo, um, all these others. I'm just going to focus on my startup drive. Um, and you can specify when and how you want to get, uh, backed up. Um, I'm a bit of a, a Blade Runner nut, so <laughs> that's, that's Electric Sheep because that was the original story. Um, Performance-wise, it will tell you um, the transfer speed of your last file. Um, you can specify whether you want things to be backed up when you're just on battery power, and that's going to be particularly important if you're on a laptop. And um, you can uh, throttle yourself, or you can... Uh, remove that. So if you're concerned about how much you want to back up per day, um, or if the backup might interfere with what you're doing during the day, you can uh, manage that. So if you go ahead and turn that back off for us there, automatic throttle. Turn off. There you go. Um, so when it's on automatic right now, it's just throttles off. Is it going to Priority, is it going to look at what else is going on in your network and say, oh, look, he just started uploading a file to YouTube. Let's scale back on what we're doing. Or does it just automatically say, I'm going to take half the bandwidth or three quarters of the bandwidth or 10% of the bandwidth? I am not an engineer, so I can't say exactly how it's functioning. I think it's spreading out your how much you're going to upload per day. Um, I'm not sure whether that does it all at once or mm. if that just does it at a trickle at a time throughout the day. Mm. It'd be interesting uh, to I know can... because it's, it's definitely putting on an automatic sounds nice, right? It's automatic. It's easy to just set it and forget it. Uh, but it'd be good to know. Does that mean at night when no one's around and nothing's happening, it's going to just take 99% of the available bandwidth and go for it. And then when I start moving the mouse around, it goes, okay, he's using the computer. Let's throttle it back. And then, like I said, I throw a file up onto YouTube or Vimeo, and it goes, "Ooh, he's uploading!" All right? Let's scale it back even more, give him that bandwidth for uh, for the other sub, for the other. I, I believe activity. for the most part, it's looking for when your machine is at idle and not during heavy usage. Uh, but I'll confirm that with you for your for your notes. Okay, great. Sounds good. Um, if you if you remove the auto throttling, um, what you can do is you can specify how fast, um, you know, whether you want your network to be faster. Mm-hmm. Um, hence, my reducing it here to how much the speed at which it's backing up, or if I want to really let just crank it up um, to how fast I want uh, things to be backed up. And what you're doing here is you can specify when you're an advanced user, you can specify how many threads you want to open for backing up. Um, and this will adjust your um, the the file throughput here the transfer speed now i recall so, when this first when this feature first came out which is, it's been a, a while now uh just taking that number of backup throws and pushing it all the way to the top doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to really get that full like if you set it if you take your slider up to fastest backups faster backups and then set the number of backup threads to the top it was at 10 yep. if we look at the top and now it says it's going to back up 20 gigabytes a day but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's actually going to happen and from what i recall right. Selecting the number of backup threads is not a universal, oh, this is easy, just set it to the max for the max. There is a a point of diminishing returns, and it really is individual for the user in the system and how you set that and whether you're going to really benefit from going to six or eight or four or whatever it might That's be. That's right. It depends on the, the speed of your connection. Um, you know, if you're on broadband, I mean, a lot of this goes back to like, you know, when we didn't have broadband. Um so, yeah, it, it allows you for what the potential is, you yeah. know, what's the maximum potential for, for the backup. And it tries to manage and do as best it, as it can to get your data up as fast as okay. possible. While it, this gives you the ability to balance speed versus performance, right? right. Um, local performance. Okay. All right. So what else? Do we um, have you can here? also schedule it, which is it's continuously backing up. You can schedule this so that it's backing up once per day um, or only when you click backup. Um, we recommend uh, continuously backing up. This is how you won't miss anything. And then you can actually specify exclusions. Um, it is going to back up everything on my machine, and that will include the system uh, folder. So I think our example earlier that you potentially could have uh, a drive stored up that could be pulled back down and be a startup drive, I think holds true. And then you can also specify which file types are not backed up. Mm. Um, and you can specify if you don't want files backed up over a certain size. Now, this is all we're trying to provide you with 
if if you never visited this screen, what's going to happen is your computer will just back up over time, right. right? These are specific settings for people who want to have nuanced backup. Sure. It is not required. Right. Um, this is just an option. So if you want to, you know, download it and forget it and back up, then Backblaze provides a fantastic service to do that. And if you happen to be that, you know, small percentage of our user base that really wants to tailor or fine tune how and what is being backed up, these provide you that, that ability. Okay, great. So great. just don't want people to think that this is required. It's sure. really a thought you know, stress-free experience. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of how you actually use Backblaze. Absolutely. Uh, but there are these options available to you, and then you can specify security. You can um, even enter a private encryption key. We keep things very secure on our side. Um, this gives you the ability to encrypt things from beginning to end um, in a way that you control. Okay. Um, through a very specific encryption key, and then you can also specify. Um, you can view reports as well as uh, schedule uh, files uh, the, or it shows you the schedule. file schedule for backup and it will show you if there were any issues. Got it. Um, so um, as I said, ultimately this first screen is basically all you would want to visit the first time around mm -hmm. after you install the trial and then just let it run. Let it run. Fantastic. Well, that makes it nice and easy. All right. I don't know if there's anything else really to talk about for the the basic backup. Is there? Because I, I do want to make sure we get to the the B two. Nope, that's okay. All right. That's it. So it's gonna update. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> All right. Because you disabled those drives, so it does a rescan. That's right. Yeah. That's fine. So um, um, yeah, let's talk about the the B two this bigger backup because as obviously our audience is primarily photographers and, and creatives in general who might be creating terabytes upon terabytes of content. Um, tell us a little bit more about this uh, this other backup option. Oh, good. Look at that. We're back. We had a little Skype hiccup snafu. Skype decided to blow up, as it does, on two systems simultaneously. That was impressive. But we're back just uh, just in time for you to tell me all about the B2 cloud backup. Right. So we have another aspect of our service called B2 cloud storage. And this is an object storage solution. So before we were talking about a system that just automatically behind the scenes backs up your machine and any drive that's attached right. to it. And B2 Cloud Storage is something that is a little bit of a different animal. It is the exact same infrastructure of what we use for um, our personal backup solution, except we are opening it up for people to use however they mm. want. Um, so you, through your normal Backblaze account, you can activate B2, you get 10 gigabytes of free object storage, and anything above that, there's additional uh, storage cost. That storage cost is particularly inexpensive. This is in the same line of storage that Amazon provides with S3, okay. in case you happen to have heard of this. And if you're a really heavy large data storage type of person, this is a really great solution because we've cr tied the uh, B2 uh, a product into a variety of different uh, vendors, including Synology, QNAP mm. for NAS use, and uh, Cloudberry if you're interested in backing up servers. Um, I recognize that an individual photographer might not use all of those things, sure. but if you are one of the more advanced types, then this is a really invaluable service. Um, the cost, for example, for storing a gigabyte of data per month on on S3 is about two cents, and for uh, Backblaze, it's half a penny. Wow! So it's the cost. it's it's per, it's particularly inexpensive, and uh, basically that adds up to about five dollars per terabyte. And um, for myself. Um, I have a, a NAS, a Synology NAS, and it just syncs all my data very cleanly. It's a network drive. It syncs it very cleanly to uh, B2, and I use that as my, my archive. And what we emphasize a lot with our personal backup and with B2 is always this concept of uh, 3 to one backup, which is have three copies of your backup, two local that are in different media mm -hmm. types, and then one to the cloud, and obviously we hope that you'll use Backblaze <laughs> as as the offsite. Sure. Excuse me, offsite, which is cloud storage. Sure, sure. Um, and it works really, really well. Um, just as easily as the personal backup backs things up in the background. Um, once you integrate with B two, like through a Synology or a QNAP um, or a Cloudberry, 
it is incredibly seamless and quick and easy. And there's, uh, there's controls on um, kind of like the life cycles of data, whether you want to keep uh, previous versions, okay. you're not bound by the same rules that we've set with a personal backup. Oh, okay. You can define your own rules. Got it. So I, I want to talk a little a little bit more about the actual setup before we do. I see you've got on your screen here a price comparison uh, to the competitors. Sure. Let's what are we what are we actually looking at here? Oh, excuse me. Um, it's 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 different. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. So it's half a penny for uh, storage of a gigabyte per month for us, and it's um, about. Uh, a little over two cents um, for for Amazon S3, and then there's there's different versions. And our system, our pricing structure is really straightforward. Um, you know, we really want it to be as dirt simple as possible. And some of the other uh, competition in this field, it's it could be very deceptive yeah. in terms of how much you're actually going to cost. And for an example of like uh, Google Cloud, you know, it's called Glacier for a reason because they actually make it very a very slow process to back up your data. So um, we don't have a system like that. You, We really want to make it as easy as possible for people to uh, back up and access their data when they need so it. It's, is it instant ac for, for restoring? Is it instant access? Because I know I've looked into the Amazon. <sighs> Wasn't I thought Glacier was the Amazon one. That's, that's the Google one, Glacier? Mm -hmm. What's Amazon's? Glacier is... Glacier is... Google, I believe. Okay. Wait, I know I've looked at the Amazon, their slow one, whatever that is. Uh, and the point mm -hmm. of it is it's, it costs less, but what you lose is the instant access. You, When you need a file, you put in a request for that file and it might take, uh, I don't know, minutes or hours or days potentially. I'm not sure how long, but it can take time before you yeah. get access to download that file. So with the, the right. B2 Cloud, you're, you don't have that. You, If, you, if I need a file, no. it's there. Okay. That's right. And very similar to the personal backup, there is a web interface and you okay. can access files directly that way. Um, and it's just a, a really fantastic service. You create a bucket, which is basically like a remote file right. folder, and you can just store drives there. You can preserve your existing file structure in that space. So and let's talk a about that, the setup for that. You mentioned if you've got a NAS or you have these other systems that you've you've partnered with to design the collab to design that syncing in, but See, I don't. I don't have that. I don't want that. I've got five uh, hard drives. Each hard drive is mm -hmm. between one and three terabytes sitting on my desk, and I just I need to back those up, and I want to use this system. What are What are right. my options here? So um, I believe Transit or is it Panic came out with Transmit Five, right? The I think the FTP software just yesterday. Okay, and that one is just a normal FTP client, and you can. Uh, just drag and drop files to uh, B2 in the exact same fashion. Um, okay. Some of these other integrations that I've been mentioning are intended to be like a little bit more of a set it up and forget it kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but um, there are other things. There's smart FTP. There's there's transmit now, um, and there's a lot of third party apps that are being developed all the time. Um, I can't remember all of them, uh, but they're worth checking out on the integrations page, um, which is this this one click over here. And um, there's some that are very specific to um, media and entertainment. There's some workflow solutions that now integrate. Um, this is for video that they integrate with with B2. Okay. Um, if you're a Mac user, Retrospect is still around, <laughs> and they still uh, are, are integrated with with us now. Um, and there's just uh, there's dozens here. Dropshare is kind of like you can install a, a Mac application that. Um, accesses B2 like um, like Dropbox. Um, so there's different, there's all kinds of different ways that people okay. are plugging into um, the, the B2 cloud infrastructure. And there's our clone, if you're a more advanced user, to kind of just use uh, Unix to start a, a synchronized backup. And uh, okay, like our sync. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so. Effectively, the service that you're providing is in this regard, not you know, we're talking about just the B2 service now. It's just the storage. It's a raw, a big, massive that's hard right. drive in the sky that's as big as you possibly want it to be. And the integration, the copying files to it, that requires some third party integration, whether it's one of these partners that's or right. it's a roll your own. Or could I even mount my infinite cloud storage drive on my desktop like any other hard drive and just in the finder drag files to it? 
Yeah, depending on the integration, that is true. Yes, you, you could, right? The DropShare one that I was talking about is kind of like that okay. setup that it just gives you a, a GUI interface to access um, your file stored on B2. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. And is there a price calculator so, it, so I can go in and say, all right, I've got this much data storage. This is what it's going to cost me. There is. Um, let's see if I can go back to the right um, the right page here. Um, farther down, there is a calculator so you can get an idea of how much the storage costs are, how much uh, the transaction fees are for, for downloads. Okay. Um, and it's basically five dollar or yeah, five dollars a terabyte. And for me, I'm not so much worried about uh, a monthly cost on download charges because um, I'm looking at it as uh, a long term archive. Right. You're hardly then, ever going to download. That's only if you really need it. That's right. And uploads are free. So like you can set something up with Synology or QNAP or some other integration and upload away. Um, so you're not paying for then, the act of uploading, but you are paying for the act of downloading. Okay, that's so you right. don't pay to and upload, you pay storage space per month. I suppose that's what it is, right? Um, and, and That's right. You, you might get, there's a certain number of calls to the system that are free. Okay. Um, so in theory, that is true. Uh, uploads are free. And um, downloads, there will be calls to find out which files you want. And if it's in large enough quantity, then it you get charged for for the download element. And what is a call? But again, it's it's so much cheaper. It's like a quarter of the cost sure. um, of any competition. So what does that mean, a call? If I'm uploading a file, is that file a call? Or what, what does that mean? Right. Um, I'm not the most technical <laughs> to answer that exact question. But as I understand it, um, a call is um, if you wanted to get a, uh, a, a list of files in a directory, you would be making a call to see what that file okay. is. If you're downloading it, you're saying, I'm making a call to download the file, and it's then downloading the individual okay. file, Got it. and you're getting charged for the action of the download. Okay. Do me a favor, would you, since you got the calculator, punch in some numbers for me. I just want to, morbid curiosity now. So initial upload, punch in uh, um, 20,000 gigabytes, so 20 terabytes. 20 terabytes. Yeah. And then a monthly upload, let's do, um, do another terabyte, so 1,000 gigs. Monthly delete, you can set that at zero and download with set that at zero because this is really just pure backup. Period of time, yeah, sure, 12 months, great. Yep, so this is, so let's go to one month, right? Because I think that that's sure, important. Sure. Um, I don't want to scare people. <laughs> well, I'm doing um, huge numbers here, but. Right, so, you know, we're talking about like $105 to store uh, 20 terabytes per month. And if you think about, I, I think when we, we're flipping in the conversation from, um, personal backup to this, right. it's it's a very different type of animal. Of so most people really enjoy the unlimited backup that the $5 provides. That is set it and forget it. And you know that you're going to be able to access critical information when you need mm -hmm. it. If you are in a more business focused uh, environment or you're transitioning to being a much more professionally oriented a photographer full time, um, and you ha have tons and tons of data, this is an incredibly versatile solution sure. because it's not just the storage element, it's whatever third party you're going to use that just uses B2 as the storage. So in the instance of like Cantima, where you're um, a video production house, you know, or a, a big time wedding photographer with lots of video, you might want to control your workflow and they provide a mechanism mm. for that. Or you could use Synology, which is like, I just want my drive, my, my NAS drive to be synced so that if anything catastrophic happens, I can access those files and not wait for a RAID rebuild. Right. right. Okay. Great. That's great. Well, thanks for punching in the numbers. It's just, uh, it's curious for myself and you know, 20 terabytes is a lot and I'm looking at it, not just stills, but also video files. And we generate a lot of content around here and uh, 20, buying 20 terabytes of storage is a lot of money locally. If I just go out and buy those hard drives, it's, you know, I can buy one terabyte, two terabyte drives pretty cheaply, but they do start to add up. And, um, and obviously that's just local, not, not redundant, uh, on its own. So good to know. Right. Um, for the uninitiated, it may seem like it's a little bit more expensive, but, um, the functionality and the flexibility sure. of setting your own rules and, life cycle rules is just invaluable. Um, the versioning is really critical. And if you're looking about the, the lifetime of your business, um, this provides you a, a vastly 
uh, uh, more customizable experience for your your archiving and data recovery. Right, absolutely. Right. And and this, you know, you said for the uninitiated, it looks expensive, but this service is not for the uninitiated. This is for someone who really is That's right. dealing with a lot of data and understands the value of backing up huge amounts of data and the complexities in, in doing that normally. So. Excellent. That's right. Right on. Well, thank you very much for showing all that to us. It's great to see that. Like I said, I've been using it for a long time, so it's it's uh, good to see how it's iterating here. And uh, it's it's a great service. You know, I can't recommend it highly enough. It makes me a little bit biased here, but but I definitely can't <laughs> recommend it highly enough. I've been using it for a long time. It's, uh, it's never failed me. And I have absolutely had to go in and pull back files many times over the years. That's good to know that. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's wrap this show up. So the next part of our show is the guest app pick. This is where we ask you, our guest, to choose one of your favorite photography-related shows. And I know it's a little bit different because you are not a professional photographer, unlike many of the guests that we have who have evolved from perhaps from photography to software development or are thinking about photography all day long. But I know that you picked out an app that you liked uh, from the photo collection. So. What, what did you like? Yeah, well, I, I used to actually be a full-time professional oh, photographer uh, not that long oh. ago. Um, well, then I And so it. the reason why I picked uh, PhotoPills um. is um, because I used to use it quite a bit. Okay. I used to do um, a lot of nature uh, or outdoor photography and uh, travel work. And uh, I used to use – I still use PhotoPills quite a nice. bit. It's a great planning I know that it was one of your previous Yeah, I think it was just uh, our episodes. last episode we talked about it. Yeah, it's it's very cool. Yeah. And they're a great set of guys that run that. I've I've been in contact with them since they actually uh, launched the application. And I've used it for some really advanced photography with Star Trails mm -hmm. and night photography. It's really, really excellent. Right on. So for anyone who hasn't seen that episode, go back. I think it's just the last episode previous to this one, but it's called Photo Pills. And and as Jim's saying, it's really all about planning those really complex shots uh, with star trails, knowing sunrise, sunset, time, location, exactly where the sun is going to come up or go down or where the stars are going to be or when the best time of month or year is to be in a certain location. So it's definitely worth uh, worth looking at there. looks like right, here, Jim's I'll, pulling, up a, pulling up a picture. Let's see what you got here. Let's see if I can oh, find nice. it. Or actually, let me go back to the page. Um, hold on just a second. Visit page. Yeah, so here you go. So this is my my personal blog uh, off my site. And so I actually used uh, photo pills for this photo um, to help uh, locate the, the North Star to see yeah. if the shot would even be possible. And then it was possible. And then I was able to actually line it up. That's cool. So we're seeing that North Star right there in the center of that uh, what do you call it? The, the hole, not a hole in the tree, but the way the branches are wrapped around looks like a hole in the right. tree right in the center it, there. It is actually a hole in the branch. This oh, is, is like it? a really ancient, dead bristle cone pine. Wow. And there really is this the hole that branch, that branch or portion of the trunk of the tree is barely hanging on. Oh, wow. Um, That's so and cool. I was, yeah, this is a single exposure on a 5D2 for about 90 minutes. Okay. Two hours. Um, so, yeah, without photo pills, this would have been a lot harder to yeah, get. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that is so cool. Nice one. Very nice. Well, thanks. That's uh, it's great oh, for obviously very selfish reasons. I love it when our guests pick a show that's already been uh, pick an app that we've already done a show about. And we, we point people back. Go watch that show. Go watch that episode. Super. Thank you. So where can people go to learn more about Backblaze and sign up for this service? I think this is fairly obvious, but let's put it out there anyway. Yeah, for Backblaze, they can go to backblaze.com. Um, that's where you can sign up for both the personal backup product as well as B2 cloud storage. Um, and once you sign up for one, you can sign up for the other really easy within the application. It's all one and the same. Um, just a matter of activating what you want. You can find Backblaze on Twitter and Facebook under the handle of Backblaze. And uh, we're even on Instagram as well. Um, can work on updating that a little bit more frequently, <laughs> but there's some fun fun behind the scenes photos of our office there. I would imagine it is. It's I've seen I've never been there, but I have seen photos of the the data pods and I know you've brought them to trade shows before showing these huge storage with big bright red pretty looking things. It's kind of cool to see. So, I would imagine it could be a pretty cool Instagram feed. That's great. So, thank you. So, it, it is just backblaze everywhere. Um Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, That's or right. not YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Do you guys have a YouTube channel actually? We do, but it's not really being utilized okay. to its full potential okay. at the moment. Fair enough. Excellent. And then uh, do you want to, sh to throw out any of your own personal uh, personal channels that you'd like people to follow you on? 
Sure. Um, you can find me on Twitter uh, and Instagram at Jim Goldstein, um, J-I-M-G-O-L-D-S-T-E-I-N. And on Facebook, um, I carried over my blog name uh, for my page, which is JMG Galleries. Okay. So JMG Galleries. Then my blog is jmg-galleries.com. But it's all <laughs> close enough. We'll stick it all in the show notes for anybody who's uh, following along and awesome. wants to wants to go check those out. Well, thank you very much, Jim. I'm glad you were able to do that. The uh, Skype explosion notwithstanding, we were able to get this back up and running, which is good, so we could finish off the show. So uh, I think that wraps us up. Thanks again for coming on. It was great to have you on here, and I know that our audience will appreciate this and and know that they got to get out there and start backing up. One last thing I want to point out, and this is something that has come up so many times. I've been talking about your service, just backup in general. And obviously, I love Backblaze. People should use Backblaze. But if you're using another service, that's fine. Just back up for the love of your files. Back them up off-site. And the most common thing that I hear when I say back up your stuff is, well, I don't have enough internet bandwidth for that. I've got too many files or too big of a hard drive, whether to you that means a terabyte or 10 terabytes or 100 terabytes, because that might be a bit much. But people say, you know, I, I don't have time for that. It's, it'd take too long. And they'll say that, and then they'll come back a year later and say it again. And then I'll hear the same person say the same thing a year later. So, you know, if you'd started this the first time you said that it would take too long, it'd be done by now. It That's really, true. And, you know, it, it is the summer. There's vacations. If you're thinking about trying this, um, when you're out on vacation, it's a great thing to just leave your machine on and let it run while you're absolutely. while you're out having fun. Absolutely. And it take if it takes you know, for many people's systems, it might take a few weeks or a month to get a complete backup, depending on your your bandwidth, obviously. Uh, for some, it might take many months. It might take a year. And, and that's fine as long as you get started. It's never going to finish if you never start. And I think that's it's right. really important for people to just go, you know, just do it. Pay the five dollars a month. Let it go. Forget about it. And. It might be six months from now and it pops up and says, your first backup is completed. You go, well, hold on a second. Well, that's cool. And then, of course, everything you add to that afterwards, incremental, just keeps on going. Um, just get it started, people. Get it started. You got to do an offsite backup. If you don't have an offsite backup, it doesn't exist. You said the three, two, one scenario. We, all, what, we always say in, as photographers, it's if it doesn't exist in three places, it doesn't exist. There you have it. That's the way to look at it. Right. Thanks again for coming on, Jen. I really do appreciate it. Everybody, you know, you can find me on the socials at Photo Joseph, and you can find previous episodes to this podcast at photoapps.expert. Just click on the podcast button or on iTunes. We have it there at 1080p, 720p, and also audio only. So if you want to listen while you drive, don't watch while you drive. It's a bad idea. Uh, but you can listen while you drive if you want to go that route. So we have those all up there. And of course, the show is on YouTube as well. Again, Photo Joseph to find me on the socials. And that's about it. So with that, it's time to put your lens cap back on and go edit some photos. Mm -hmm.